Hi class, so today we discuss naman natin is bonds payable. So long term din tong type of payable and similar with notes and loans payable. So in the last discussion, we discussed about notes payable where it is a payable evidence by a promissory note. So ang pinagkaiba ni bonds payable, although same sila na long term, is ito usually issued sa general public. Kumbaga hindi lang siya tipong one on one na Uh, company and another company or another person. So, bonds payable is generally issued to the public. Okay, so bonds payable. Whenever funds are being borrowed, can be obtained from a small number of sources. So, kapag mangungutang ka, usually notes ang gagamitin mo or mortgages, pero kapag large amount, so masyadong malaking amount, so an entity may have to borrow from the general investing public through the use of a bond issue. So, technically, para kang nangungutang sa general investing public. So, bond is a formal and conditional promise made under seal to pay a specified amount. So, ang bonds payable, so, let's say, nag-purchase ka ng bond, ng isang bond. Tapos, ibig sabihin ng pagbili mo nun is ikaw yung may utang. Kasi nung bumili ka ng bond, nag-issue si, um, si tao ng pera para sa'yo, para ganun. So, ngayon, may payable ka. So, to evidence yung payable na meron ka, you will have a bond certificate and bond indenture. So, ang bond indenture kasi, ito naman yung agreement mo with the person as to the, uh, kumbaga yung laman ng paning kasunduan nyo where it, when it pertains to the bonds payable. So, there are different types of bonds payable. So, in terms of um, uh, payment, we have terms and serial bonds. So, term bonds are those with single date of maturity or lump sum. Let's say, uh, umutang ka ng January 1, 2021, bayaran mo ng January 1, 2023. So, that is term bonds kasi single date lang yung maturity. You don't need to pay installment. Unlike with serial bonds, this is the one na pinipay in series of maturity dates or in installment. So, the serial bonds is installment type ng bonds. So, term bonds and serial bonds. Next naman, when it, uh, per, when it um, includes kumbaga, sa securities na na portion, we have three types of bonds. We have mortgage, collateral, and the venture bonds. Mortgage bonds is the one that is secured with real property. So real properties, mga PPE, property plus na equipment, etc. So, kumbaga, namutang ka, pero sinisecure mo yon ng isang real property. So, minor gauge mo yung property mo in case hindi ka makabayad, pwede nilang kuwanin ang iyong real property. Next is collateral bonds. Collateral bonds is somehow similar with mortgage bonds since uh, this is on, also secured. So, kumbaga, yung nangutang ka, meron kang binibigay na security sa inutangan mo. Pero si collateral, ang pang-secure naman niya is shares or bonds of other corporations. So, dito, si si mortgage, secured din, pero real property. Si collateral, secured din, pero shares and bonds of other corporation. And the last type of bond under these securities is the venture bond. So, the venture bonds naman is those that unsecured. Hindi kailangan ng collateral, hindi kailangan ng security. Pwede ma-issue yung bond, pwede kang pautangin without the need of a collateral or mortgage. Next is about the registration. So, this is... um. Uh, kumbaga, registered bond ang tawag kapag need pa, i-register sa book. So, uh, kumbaga, oh, nag-issue ng bonds, kailangan i-take note kung sino na kanina na pag dinipat mo, in-note ko. Doon yung registered bonds. Unlike with coupon or bearer bonds, ito, hindi mo na kailangan i-record. So, kahit pagpasapasahan niyo yung bonds, is hindi niya na kailangan i-record who owns the bond at any point in time. Okay, so I've mentioned kanina about bond indenture. So when you're issued a uh, bond, you have a bond certificate and also a bond indenture. So bond indenture is the contract between the issuer, the issuer and the bond holder. So this serves as your agreement. So what includes in this bond indenture? So included here is the purpose. Why are you borrowing the fund? When is the payment dates? How about the protection period? Non-payment actions, ano gagawin if hindi ka nagbayad? How much is the interest? Kailan magmamature? Pa meron ba tong conversion feature? Kasi meron mga bonds na nakoconvert. Meron, sinong contact information ko in case meron akong mga tanong or meron akong concerns about it? Interest rates, 
Meron ba tong call feature, covenants, and collaterals? Meron ba mga collateral information, etc. So, what are the advantages? Bakit pa natin ginagawa ang isang bond indenture? Siyempre, this bond indenture serves as your agreement. So, first, it will serve as your supporting document. So, if you're a company, it will serve as your kumbaga, guide kung ano bang laman ng isang bond na inisyo sa akin. So, it will avoid confusion since the agreement is documented. So, when you have bond indenture, kumbaga, doon na kasi nakalagay as to, ayun uh, nga, itong mga details sa to. So, um, in case na malimutan mo, babalik ka malang bond indenture. It protects shareholder interest. So, syempre, a shareholder, uh, this will be your, kumbaga, parang limitations as to pag sinabi niya, hindi ito yung itaas mga interest rate. Kasi you already agreed as to the interest rate and as to the terms of the bonds. So next, it maintains transparency. Transparency means yung alam ng isa't isa kung ano yung uh, utang ng isa't isa. Kung baga, alam natin na, okay, ito yung pinag-usapan natin. So it lists features and details of bonds. Pero uh, ang, ang problema lang about this advantage of bond indenture is it is not transferable. So technically, it is under registered bonds kapag may bond indenture. Kasi hindi mo siya basta maitapapasa agad nang hindi mo tinatapos. Okay? And non-negotiable. So, uh, dito, for uh, source, ito, yung e-finance management. So, kinuha ko lang din ito sa net. So, I stated that uh, yung pinagkuhanan ko yung source na ito. Okay? So, next, let's go to the accounting part of this bond payable. So, bonds payable, like any other financial liability instrument, is initially recorded at fair value plus transaction cost, except if it is initially at fair value through profit or loss, wherein the transaction cost will be expensed. So, this is very similar with the notes payable. Also, the subsequent measurement is very similar with the notes payable since it is recorded at amortized cost using effective interest method or true fair value through profit or loss if it is initially measured as fair value through profit or loss. Okay, so similar also with notes payable. Actually, this is also similar during IA1, the notes receivable. Diba na meron tayong mga uh, issuance at premium, issuance at discount, mga ganun bagay. So, uh, balikan natin and i-refresh to mga to. So, okay. During issuance at a premium, it means that the issue price is greater than the face amount. So, dahil ikaw yung nangungutang this time, let's say, um, sinabi niya na ang bonds payable ko at face amount is 5 million. Pero bibigyan na kita ng 5 million 250,000. It means it is issued at a premium and it is a gain for you. You have a premium on bonds payable, di ba? Kumbaga, uh, kumbaga advantage mo siya. And itong premium na to is not uh, outright gain, so it is amortized using effective interest method. So issuance at a discount naman is pag lower yung in-issue sa'yo kesa dun sa face amount na babayaran mo na 5 million. So um, kumbaga itong mga, itong mga premium and discount on bonds payable, are reported as adjustments to the bond liability account. So, nininet natin siya. Let's say, we have bond payable of 5 million less discount of 250. So, we have bond payable of 4750. Yun yung magiging reflected yung bond payable in the financial statement. So, baka sabi mo, magkano yung bond payable natin? Sabi natin 5 million kasi yun yung nakikita natin. But, take note that in FS presentation, we net the discount and premium from the bonds payable. Kaya magiging adjustment siya and not considered as separate from the bonds payable account. Okay. So, bond issue cost. Okay. So, yung bond issue cost, ito yung binabanggit natin kaninang mga uh, transaction na uh, mga expenses or yung initially nire-record natin. So, bond issue cost includes printing and engraving cost legal and accounting fee, registration fee with regulatory and authorities, commission paid to agents and other writers, and other similar charges. Okay. Eh, sorry, go back. Ayan. So, yun lang for the discussion since uh, the rest is i-discuss ko in Excel na para uh, medyo mas madali for us. Okay. Share ko ngayon yung Excel file. Ayan. So, dito sa Excel file, there will be four parts. First is the recording of interest on bonds payable. Then, it also includes na paano kapag in-issue 
um, on interest date and paano kapag between interest date. So, this is very similar with um, receivable portion wherein nag-aano din tayo paano pag may interest date, syempre merong accrual. So, if you're uh, IA2 na ngayon, most likely somehow familiar ka na kasi same approach siya with IA1 na notes receivable. Okay, next natin is paano pag retire ang bond? Paano pag retire prior to maturity date? Next is ano yung treasury bonds and paano siya ina-account? Then last is paano kapag uh, meron tayong bond refunding na tinatawag? So actually hindi pa dito natatapos yung bonds payable. Ginawa ko tong video na two parts. So bonds payable will be discussed in uh, two videos kumbaga para uh, hindi siya overwhelming since medyo mahaba yung um, other discussions about bonds payable. Okay, so let's start first with the uh, recording interest on bonds payable. So accounting for interest expense on bonds payable requires recognition of these two items. So first is the payment of interest during the year and the accrual of interest at the end of the year. So kunyari, during the year, there is this um, bond payable na ang maturity, ay ang interest dates niya is um, nyare October, every October. So, magbabayad ka muna every October. Pero, i-accrue mo yung October to December mo. Kasi, uh, technically, ang iyong financial statement is as of December 31. So, you need to acknowledge that there is this interest payment that you need to accrue in line with our accrual method of accounting. So, kailangan mo nag accrue ka hanggang December 31. So, Illustration number one natin. So on March 1, 2021, an entity issued bonds payable with a face amount of 5 million and 12% interest payable semi-annually. So ito March 1 and September 1. So you will notice na we need to pay interest during March 1 and September 1. And we also need to accrue from September 1 to December 31. In as much as the bonds are issued at March 1, the first payment will be on September 1. So the first payment of interest will be September 1, 2021. So the journal entries will be yes, September 1. Sabi natin, September 1. First natin kailangan gawin is mag-record ng interest expense. So meron tayong 300,000 na interest expense. So paano natin nakuha yan? So we have a face amount. Face amount, ayan, tagay kong din nagsulat, no? 5 million. And 12% daw ang kanyang interest. So 12% interest. Interest. So ngayon, every semi-annual siya. So ibig sabihin, 1 over 2 or 50% ng interest yung babayaran niya ng September 1. So that will be 300,000. So next, sabi natin bukod sa payment of interest, we need to accrue from September 1 to December 31. So that is September, October, November, December. That is four months. So kung four months ang pinag-uusapan natin, we need 5 million times 12% times 4 over 12. So 4 over 12, we have 200,000 for our accrual. So here comes January 1. So anything na uh, inaccrue, inaccrue natin to, di ba? Accrual to, we need to reverse it. Bakit natin need i-reverse? Kasi mag overstate yung ating interest expense if ipapakita natin or i-retain natin yung 200,000 dyan tapos magbabayad ka din naman on March 1. So, you need to reverse it. We only entered the accrual for the sake of, uh, kumbaga, as of December 31, tama yung interest expense natin. Okay? So, on January 1, we will reverse it. Then, come March 1, we need to pay again the interest. So, that is 50% again. So that is similar here. So 300,000. And September 1, semi-annual interest ulit. And December 31, we need to accrue again. So technically, ganun lang yung concept ni uh, interest. Kumbaga, interest expense and accrual. But how about if the issuance of bonds payable is issuance of bonds payable on interest date? Okay, so on June 1. So June 1 daw, June 1, 2021, an entity issued bonds payable with face amount. So, ang face niya is 5 million. Inissue siya at um, issue price niya at 0.97. So, what do we mean na at 97? So, that means that is 5 million times 0.97. Okay? Or 97%, di ba? 5 million times 0.97 will be the issue price. So, that is 4 million 850. 4.85 million. So technically, ang na-receive mo lang is 4.85. So you have 
discount, di ba? Kasi lugi ka eh. Kung baga, 5 million babayaran mo in the end, tapos 4.85 lang in-issue sa'yo. So, that discount is 150,000. Yan. So, the entry, the entry will be the cash na na-receive natin of 4,850,000, the bonds payable that we will be paying of 5 million, and the uh, discount dito. May discount dito. Discount of 150,000. Okay, so what is the treatment on the discount in the FS natin? It is deducted in the bonds payable. So, total bonds payable will reflect 4,850. Okay? Next. So, sabi natin, meron tayong payment of interest every June 1 and December 1. So, First payment natin is December 1. Meron tayong semi-annual interest of 300,000. So, paano natin makukuha ang interest na babayaran natin? So, we need to uh, multiply. So, dito natin. Excel natin. So, 5 million. So, 5. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 million times. Ilan yung interest yan? 12%. Okay? 600,000 divided by 2. We have 300,000. That is your semi-annual interest. Pero take note, December 1 siya nagbayad. So we still need to accrue December 1 to December 31. So that's why we have accrual here. So interest expense, accrual. So how do we accrue? We need to get the interest expense. 5 million times 10% ba? I forgot. Okay, 12. 5 million times 0.12 multiplied by... One month lang naman. One month over 12. So that is 50,000 pesos. So that is your accrual. So how do you accrue? You debit interest expense and credit to accrued interest payable. So we know na, na next year, January 1, 2022, we need also to uh, reverse that. Okay. So meron siyang ginawa dito, amortization of bond discount. Dahil merong bond, bond discount. Yan. Meron tayong tinitawag na bond discount. Kanina kasi wala, di ba? Wala siyang bond discount. Kumbaga, at face lang din. Ngayon, may bond discount tayo tayong tawag. So, when we have discount, we we amortize it. We amortize the 150,000 using three methods. Pwedeng um, uh, effective interest, pwedeng straight line, or pwedeng bonds outstanding. So, ito yung tinuro ko din under effective interest method, IA1. Okay? So, dito for... Uh, purposes so na mapadali lang muna, ginamit niya is straight line. So, 150,000 is amortized. So, 150,000. Ito, yung text. 150,000, dinivide niya straight line sa 5 years. So, 30,000. Then, minultiply niya sa months. Outstanding. 7 over 12. Kaya, naging 17,500. Ang kanyang amortization ng bonds payable. Okay. Next, issuance of bonds between interest date. So, paano kapag yung bonds nasa gitna ng interest date? So, kanyari, on April 1, an entity issued bonds payable with phase. So, ang phase amount niya is 5 million. Ang kanyang issue, yan, at premium, kasi nakatanggap ka ng 5 to 2, 8,000 plus may accrued interest. Ayan, papangit tayo ng papangit na sulat. <laughs> so, may accrued interest. So, bakit nga ba tayo may accrued interest? Kasi, dito, binili mo April 1. Ang kanyang uh, interest is January 1 and July 1. So, technically, you need to, uh, kumbaga, recognize na meron ng uh, accrued interest na nasa loob na itong April 1. Kasi, July 1 yung last niyang, uh, last na interest. So, January, February, March, April. Ah, so, kung April 1 mong binili, January 1 yung last na uh, interest niya. So, tingnan natin, paano natin ngayon i-record yung issue 1? So, we need to debit cash na natanggap natin. Pero hindi pa natin alam kung magkano kasi may accrued interest, di ba? So, bonds payable muna. So, bonds payable of credit na 5 million. So, bonds payable credit na at face amount. Tapos, Yung premium, yung premium natin is 228,000. Yung natanggap natin in, in uh, excess ng 5 million. Then, meron tayong interest expense na tinatawag natin accrued interest. Pero nire-record natin siya as interest expense. So, bakit pabawas? Kasi ang interest expense, 
kung maaalala niyo sa notes receivable, ang accrued interest, ikaw yung nagbabayad. Pero this time around, dahil ikaw yung payable side, ikaw yung makakatanggap ng accrued interest. Ayan. Kaya technically, pabawas siya. Kung may kita niyo yung interest expense, naka-credit side. So, masahin natin to. Note that if the bonds are issued between interest dates, an accrued interest is involved. Normally, when bonds are issued between interest dates, the accrued interest is paid by the buyer or investor. Okay? So, technically, ang impact sa atin as payable side is credit na interest expense. So, paano naman natin Uh, tawag dito, nakuha yung 150,000 natin. So, that is 5 million times 12% times one half. Yun yung 300,000, yung interest niya for the whole. Tapos hinati pa niya divided by 2, kaya 150,000. So, actually, may isang approach dyan na mas preferred ko rin actually. Yung isang beses ka lang mag-e-entry. So, ganito natin siya gagawin. So, debit cash of 5378, credit ng bonds payable and Uh, premium advance payable. So, the payment of first semi-annual is recorded as debit to accrued interest payable and debit to interest payable of 150. So, in either approach kasi, ang kailangan lang naman, ang interest expense must only be 150,000 which is the correct interest expense. Since um, nakuha natin yan, so ito, di ba meron tayong 5 million tapos ang interest natin is 12%. Tapos, um, half pa lang naman. So, sorry, 5 million. So, ang kanya is 300,000. Ang kanyang semi-annual interest. Kaso nga lang, binili mo siya April na. So, technically, April, May, uh, kumbaga sa January 1 to July 1, nasa loob nun si April, di ba? So, January, February, March. So, January, February, March. Yun lang yung technically na uh, babayaran niya. April, May, June. So, January, February, March, that is the three months. So, pag hinating mo ito, yung $150,000 na January to March, that is the accrued. Parang ganun. Tapos, yung $150,000, which is April to July, one na, April, May, June, kaya three months lang, is, it is the expense. So, technically, in the end, kahit anong gamitin mo way, basta dapat ang interest mo is your actual interest only of $150,000 from April to June or July 1. Okay. So, next natin. Okay. So, that's for the interest and uh, discounting, di ba? So, next natin is retirement. Retirement na agad. Okay. So, bond, bond retirement on maturity date. So, syempre, kunyari, at the end, Siyempre yun na, magbabayad ka na. Kasi payable mo din naman to, di ba? So, di ba sabi natin, under term bonds, pwedeng at the end ka na magbayad. So, there is this, uh, kumbaga, sinking fund, sorry, na tinatawag. So, pwede kang, pwedeng mag-agree yung parties dun sa baka nilang bond indenture. So, ito yung kasunduan nila. Na need mo mag-establish ng, siyempre, di kasi yung sulat ko dito, no? ng sinking fund. So, what is sinking fund? So, di ba, ito yung cash mo na nakaset aside for future purposes. So, ang purpose na ito for this case is the payment of bond payable. So, pwede mapagkasan doon nila o mag-establish ka ng seeking fund para sure ako na ipambayad ka na tinatabi mo na dyan sa uh, pera mo para hindi ka mabigla, parang gano'n. So, kapag uh, bayaran na, ang mangyayari is tatanggalin mo lang naman sa seeking fund. So, this is parang cash mo kasi, di ba? Pero it, Under IA1 cash nga, hindi included ang sinking fund kasi ang purpose niya is long term. So technically, this is other current asset. So tatanggalin mo na yung sinking fund, so you need to credit it and bayaran mo na yung bonds payable and interest expense. Pero kasi kung hindi ka nag-issue ng sinking fund, the kumbaga, retirement or at the end, pag magbabayad ka na, you need only to credit your cash. Pero yun, notang mo yan, di ba? So next, paano kapag re-retire prior to maturity date. So, hindi pa siya tapos pero gusto mo nang i-retire. Okay. So, anong gagawin natin? So, ang gagawin natin is first, kailangan ma-amortize. Kailangan mong i-update yung computation mo ng premium or discount amortization up to date of retirement. Next is, kailangan yung balance na itong premium or uh, discount is ma-determine. So, magkano na lang ba yung um, premium and or discount natin? So, this balance is important because the amount 
to the related of the bansutide is cancelled. This, this balance is important because the amount related to the bonds retired is cancelled. Okay, inulit ko lang. The accrued interest to date of retirement should be determined. Magkano yung accrued interest? Kailan din natin malaman. The total cash payment. Magkano ba yung kailangan kong uh, bayaran? Kailangan kong pitin ko. So, cash payment will equal to the magkano yung retirement price. Magkano ba yung dapat bayaran if now ko na mabayaran? And the accrued interest. The retirement price is a certain percent of face amount on the bonds payable. And the carrying amount of the bonds payable retired is determined. So, kailangan din malaman magkano na lang ba yung carry amount. Then, mag-compete ng gain or loss. So, lahat ang sinabi niya, hindi natin agad may isip or maintindihan if hindi natin itatry sa problem. So, try natin ngayon sa problem. So, on March 1, 2021, bonds with a face amount of 5 million. So, Ano to? May dumi. <laughs> Bonds, para siya nga lang. Buod. Bonds with a face amount of 5 million. So, ang face amount niya, so face amount niya is 5 million. So, face amount of 5 million are in issue. So, ang issue niya is 4,730. So, that means meron tayong discount. 5 million less 4,730. Initially issued at discount. So, at discount to. Okay, the bonds are dated March 1 and mature in 5 years pa. Tapos, 12% na interest niya, semi-annual March 1 and September 1. Straight line method daw yung ginamit. Diba sabi ko, meron tayong tatlong type ng pag-amortize. Meron tayong straight line, bonds outsiding, and effective interest. So, for simplicity, ito daw muna yung ginamit niya. Okay. Ngayon, July 1, 2024 pa lang, hindi pa 5 years, limitar niya na at 97. So, ibig sabihin na at 97 is face amount multiplied by 0.97. So, first, ang dapat natin gawin is, sabi dito sa uh, dito na sa ating guide, kailangan natin i-amortize up to retirement date. So, magkano ba yung amortization natin up to retirement date? So, ang last natin na amortization, kung Okay, natin. Ang last natin amortization will be um, March 1 and September 1, tapos July. Yung hari, February, March. Ibig sabihin, March 1 siya last na na-amortize. So, March, April, May, June, July. So, July ang time. The amortization is recorded up to July 1, 2024. If the entity uses a calendar, ayun, push presumably. The last amortization was on December 31. Kumbaga, kahit na tinitignan natin March 1 and uh, September 1, most likely, ang last amortization niya, dahil like accrue siya, is December 31. So, ang kailangan niyang i-amortize ngayon is December 31 to um, July 1. July 1, 2024. Okay, so interest expense, 20, ay 270,000 divided by 5 five years. So 270,000 is the difference of 5 million and 4730 which is the discount. So the discount is amortized over straight line for simplicity lang muna. So 54,000 na annual amortization multiplied by 6 months which is January 1 to July 1 that is 27,000. That is yeah, the ano, kumbaga, uh, amortization up to retirement date. Number 2, balance of discount. So Ang ating discount on bonds payable is 270,000 initially minus lahat ng amortization. If we will complete the amortization, there is already pass of 40 months from the date of issue. So the balance na lang ng ating discount on bonds payable will be 90,000. Next. The accrued interest on the date of retirement is computed as yung 5 million times 12% times 4 over 12. So the last payment of interest was March 1. So if mag accrue ka, the accrued interest is for 4 months from July 1 up to date of retirement. So magkano ngayon yung need mong bayaran or cash payment? Retirement price mo is at 0.97. So ibig sabihin, 4,850 yung need mong bayaran plus the accrued interest kasi nasa gitna siya nung, uh, yung interest na dates niya. So, total na babayaran mo if you want to retire, it is 5 million 50. So, ngayon, kailangan mong makuha yung carry amount of bonds payable para makompare it with the babayaran mo. So, technically, ang bonds payable mo kasi is 5 million, di ba? Then, ang remaining discount mo, ito, main discount mo is 90,000. So, 
as of this as of July 1, 2024, you have carrying amount of 4 million 910. So ito na lang kasi yung aking um tawag dito, carrying amount. Tapos ang babayaran ko, kumbaga is uh, retirement price ko is point at point 0.97 is 4850. 4850. So, you will have a 60,000 na gain. So, kumita pa ako kasi uh, ang bonds payable ko if ako yung magbabayad 4910. Pero dahil din tayo ko na ngayon, binayaran ko na 4850 na lang yung need kong bayaran. So, may gain ako na 60,000. So, how do we record it? So, i-retire natin yung 5 million nating bonds payable. Tapos meron tayong accrued interest expense. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, may accrued interest expense tayo na 200,000. So dito natin to nakuha. Ayan. So 200,000. Number 3. The next, yung cash na uh, need mong bayaran which is 4850 plus 200,000. That is 5,050,000. Then discount. Yung sabi natin na balance ng ating discount of 90,000 to have the updated carry amount. Then may gain ka ngayon na 60,000 which is completed as this. Diba? So ganun siya competent. So if ayaw mo isa-isa, kasi kung ako, ayaw ko rin isa-isahin yung step. Baka makalimutan ko pa. But technically, ang kailangan mo lang na maisipin, if i-retire ko siya ngayon, magkano na lang ba yung carrying amount niya versus the retirement price to get the magkano ba yung gain or loss ko. So, kailangan lang, syempre, mag-update ka ng computation of accrued interest, magkano na lang discount, para makomplete mo and magawa mo ng formula. So, kahit na ano pa itanong sa'yo, kung nakukuha mo hanggang dito, pwede mong makuha lahat ng balances. Okay, next tayo. So, next natin is about treasury bond. So, if you're familiar with treasury stock, so... Baka hindi pa kasi IA to siya sa end. So, treasury stock kasi pertains dun sa pagbili mo ng sarili mong stock pabaya. So, di ba pag if issuing company ka tapos nag-issue ka ng stock, so how na siya na shareholder. Treasury stock means binibili ko ulit. So, ganun din yung concept ni treasury bonds. So, treasury bonds is uh, an entity's own bond. So, technically, bonds mo to na in na originally sa iba, pero reacquired binili mo ulit. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, kinancel mo. Binili mo lang ulit. Okay? The acquisition of treasury bonds calls for the same accounting procedure accounted to formal retirement. So, parang retirement lang din daw. In other words, treasury bonds at face should be debited, debited at face amount and any unamortized premium or discount should be cancelled. Any accrued interest is charged to interest expense. So, similar with number two natin kanina, di ba? Excuse me. About bond retirement. Tapos magkakaroon din ng gain or loss. So example, an entity issued bonds payable with a face amount of 5 million. So meron siyang 5 million face amount. Tapos inisyo niya originally at a premium of 5 million to 50. So may premium na 250. Subsequently, the entity they acquired bonds. So yung, um, yung issuing entity, then acquire niya yung 1 million. 1 million lang, di naman lahat. Gusto niya kasi ilagay sa treasury uh, bonds niya. Treasury bonds is parang binili ko at as nakastock lang sa akin lang. Parang gano'n. One, one, at 103 niya binili. Okay? At the time of pre-acquisition, meron pang an amortized. So, ang balance daw, so hindi ko na pinag-compute, merong an amortized na 200,000 and accrued interest is 30,000. So, di ba? Tulad nung kanina, we just need to uh, retire. Retire the 1 million, pero record is record it as treasury. Tapos, kailangan nating uh, tawag dito, i-tanggalin yung remaining premium. So, may premium pa daw na 200,000. Out of this 200,000, kailangan ko lang is 1 million over 5. So, that is 40,000. Next is to record yung interest expense na binayaran ko na 30,000. And so the cash will be 1,060,000 and ang ating gain is 10,000. Yeah, so very similar siya doon sa kanina. Yeah, so ganyan siya. So paano natin na-compute yung gain? So technically, you have face amount of 1 million. 
may premium pa siya ng 40,000. So, ang remaining carrying amount niya is 1 million 40 compared with the pagbili natin na 1 million 30. So, we have gain of 10,000. Actually, same treatment lang naman sa discount. So, hindi ko na i-focus yet. So, last item natin is bond refunding. So, bond refunding is the issue once, kumbaga na parang, uh, ta dito, pag gusto mong i-retire din premature. So, actually, medyo kamukha na naman siya nung kanina, pero iba lang yung purpose niya. So, bond refunding is the floating of new. mag issue ka kasi ulit. So, kumbaga, i-retire ko kasi mag issue lang din ako ulit ng new bonds payable. So, the proceeds from which are used in paying the original bonds. Okay. Simply stated, bond refunding is a premature retirement. So, re-retire ka niya, pero nag-issue ka ng new bonds payable. It is also known as bond refinancing. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, kapag ginagawa itong bond refunding, usually kumikita ka pa. Tingnan natin sa example later. So, when refunding is made on a date of maturity, o technically kung sa dulo naman na, wala lang problema kasi para ka lang din nag-retire and nag-issue ng bagong bond. Pero kapag nasa gitna, syempre meron pang mga unamortized premium na tulad ng treatment natin kanina sa retirement is we also need to cancel it. Okay, so same manner lang naman din daw. Diba? However, where refunding is made prior to the maturity date, consideration must be given to the refunding charges. So prior to the old bond payable. Bond refunding shall be accounted for as an extinguishment or pagtanggal na ng liability. Then, kapag may refunding charges, is it is charged as loss on extinguishment. So, try natin itong problem ito. So, issuance of a new 10-year. So, nag-issue siya ng bago. Kasi nga, kapag bond refinancing or bond refunding, is nag-issue ka ng bago. Nag-issue siya ng bagong 10-year with face amount of 1,500,000. Inisyo niya for 1,600,000. 10 years to 10%. So, yung old niya is 12%. Meron pa tong 4 years useful life. And at 102. So, 1 million. Tapos ito, 1.02. So, meron pa siyang discount na natitira na 30,000. And ang kanyang retirement price is 1 million 20. So, ngayon, i-record natin yung issue once ng new bonds payable. So, you issued 1 million 60,000. That is... Ito yung natanggap mo. Tapos, tinanggal mo na yung bonds pay, ay tinanggal, uh, nag-record yung bonds payable and 10, 100,000 is recorded as your premium. Ano naman yung old? So sabi natin, as if retirement lang, so we need to retire bonds payable of 1 million. Patanggalin na natin tong old. Tapos, meron tayong discount na 30,000 pa, kailangan din natin tong tanggalin. So, 30,000. Tapos, sabi niya, para may retire mo to, Kailangan bayaran mo ako. Siyempre, hindi ka naman mag-retire nang hindi nagbabayad. So, you need to credit 1,020,000. So, the balancing figure would be the 50,000 loss on extinguishment of bonds. Kasi technically, ito na lang yung carrying amount. Tapos, binayaran mo 1,020,000. So, nalugi ka ng 50,000. So, that is kung gusto mong i-balancing figure. Pero meron namang ways to compute the 50,000. First one is an amortized discount on bonds payable. So, Technically, kaya ka nag kasi first, meron ka pang uh, unamortized discount. So, hindi mo pa na-amortize. So, na-loss ka dahil dyan. Plus, yung bago, yung bagong binili is at, uh, kumbaga, premi ay, meron ka pang premium na 1 million times 2% ng redemption premium. So, technically, on the end, ang yung refunding charges is 50,000. Or you can also view it this way. Ang carrying amount pa ng bonds mo is 970,000 which is the bonds payable less discount na 30,000. Tapos ang binayaran mo 1,020,000. So 50,000 yung loss mo. So I think mas madaling intindihin to. Kumbaga, ito yung bond mo na 970,000. Nagbayad ka ng 1,020,000. So in the end, nalugi ka ng 50,000. So that's all for bonds payable na part 1 natin. So as mentioned earlier, magkakaroon tayo ng part 2 for the bonds payable. So uh, abangan na lang din natin. So, thank you so much for watching and hope that may natutunan tayo about, about bonds payable. Bye-bye!